What's up guys, my name is Andy. In my 68 F100, I've got the telltale signs of the leaky heater core. Uh, the heater core in my heater box has failed, and so what I wanna do is get this thing taken out so we can get it replaced. One of the problems that you'll notice is when these things leaking, it'll get all over the floor. It can rust out the, the floor pans here, and this is something that I wanna get taken care of before I get the truck back out on the road. This is what that heater core looks like, so we're gonna go ahead and get this heater box out, get this guy installed. Let's get after it. Now to get this heater box uninstalled, it's actually pretty easy. There are three bolts on the firewall on the engine side, so we'll get after those. Then we've got these two tubes here for the defroster. Take the cables off from the heater controls, and this thing should come right out. This, this little boot right here to the inlet for the air, that should come right off. We can pull this out of the way and get right to the heater core. So now we're looking on the engine side of the firewall. We wanna go after the nuts on those three studs right there that will loosen the box up from the firewall. We'll also wanna take the clamps off the heater hose so we can get this box out. But before we want to take those hoses off, we do want to drain the radiator. But in my case, I've got, let's open this up. If we open this up all the way, the, the, the valve here on the bottom of the radiator, nothing comes out. I've got a leak in my radiator, so there's nothing in there, which means there's not much coolant in the system. So whatever's going to be back here is going to be, you know, kind of residual stuff. And there might be a little bit of a leaking, but uh, for your truck, you may want to make sure you get that thing drained before you pull those hoses off. So let's get those hoses off. All right, now that we got the nuts off those three studs, we can go in the cab and pull the rest of this box out. Now back in the cab, we want to take these two uh, defrost ducts off. Oh, that was an easy one. And there we go, they just come right off. Okay, we're gonna go after these two cables here in a second. But first, we can pull this guy forward a little bit more. And you'll notice that this accordion kind of piece here on the end by the, the fresh air vent, there's these little metal clips that hold on to the rubber boot. If you pull those off, it makes this boot easier to take off. There we go. Now the pro tip to getting this so you don't have to figure out where the cable went because the things are, you know, these things are set up so that the tension works perfectly on these these doors and stuff. If you put a piece of tape on this side and this side, you'll know right where the clip went to on the cable. If we just wrap this on here like so, we'll know right where the cable was mounted, the, the, like the flush part, right? Right up to the edge there. And we'll just take a screwdriver, and loosen up these clips. You wanna save the screw and that little clip piece that just fell back here. And then these cables just slide right off of, right off of the, the actuator. There we go. There we go. And you might want to remember which one went where. I noticed that the one with the shorter lead on it went farther over, so that may make it easier. All right, this guy can come right down. We'll pull this connector off the back and then we'll pull the lead for the fan motor. There we go. All right, this guy can come out of the truck now. All right, let's get after this thing. We got a couple of 516 screws to get out of here. Forgot one more. Okay. There we go. Now you're gonna have, typically have lots of debris and stuff in here, which is fine. This is probably the original copper unit. Uh, so we're gonna swap it out for this guy here. It's the same, same thing, but uh, not leaking. <laughs> and it just goes back in the same way the tubes come out the bottom here, so that's good. And we'll just have to attach this on here. And then hopefully this piece will, will hold it in place. This, 
this little clip thing here is genius, the way this thing kind of puts pressure on it to hold this flush up against the boot and everything. It's pretty cool. I think we can put the screws back in. All right, this guy is ready to put back in the truck. All right. All right, guys, I'm an idiot. I had to put, I put the boot on upside down, so I had to take it back apart and pull that out, but that's okay, we got it done. So now I wanna put this back in the cab and we're just gonna start going reverse what we did. So we took this plug off, put that back on, and then the power wire for the motor, put that back on, and then these guys need to go on. Now comes the harder part of trying to get this stuff to align with the holes in the firewall because you can't see unless you got somebody to help you tell you if everything's lined up. I think we're close. I'm gonna put these guys back on. I'm gonna see if I can use a tool to prop this up and hold this in place. Go put the nuts on the back side and the firewall. I got it. I got one at least. <laughs> so now that's in place. We got tubes hooked up, the wires hooked up, the, you know, the, the controls, the slides are hooked up. The last little part is this boot here. And uh, this part is just gonna take a little bit of patience just to fit this around the, the edge. You have to get a flat screwdriver and then don't forget to put these clips back on when you get these put on there. And like I mentioned earlier, we got those nuts on the, those studs so we're hooked up there. Now normally this is where you would hook the heater hoses back up. Make sure the one with this valve goes on that side, on the passenger side. And then this recirc loop that on my car, my truck, it goes through the carburetor and over here. But uh, anyways, the one with this, this heat, you know, heat valve, the one that's for hot and cold, um, you know, for the heater, this one goes on the passenger side. Uh, but I'm not going to put these back on because these hoses are bad and dried out. So I'm going to replace them, but that's boring. So I'm just going to cut those up and put some new pieces on. I got a new 12 foot uh, piece of, of hose that I can replace all this stuff with. So I'll do that later time because that's kind of boring. All right guys, that was meant to just be a quick video on how to swap out these heater cores. These are pretty easy to do on these trucks. There's not a lot to it. And it's pretty easy to get that heater core. I mean, you could do it by yourself. Uh, if you don't have, if you have help, then of course that makes things a lot easier. So, um, but other than that, we got her done and I've got some more parts to do in this truck, so I better get to it. All right guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.